Good afternoon and welcome to the Grad Cracker webinar featuring Amy. So Amy advertises their degree apprenticeship, placement and graduate opportunities on Grad Cracker. They are a leading supplier of engineering, consulting and infrastructure services, and they're also involved in facilities and estate management. So let's find out a little bit more about Amy, their opportunities which are currently open to applications, and also what a future could look like for you at Amy. Mr Perks, I'm coming Hello. to you. Hello, love. <laughs> back in the room. Hello. I'm back. I'm back. I'm here. <laughs> so, so this is Steve. Um, we, me and Steve have worked together for the last 10 years, as you probably can tell. Um, Steve, tell the students about Amy and how you would describe the company. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming along today. Um, yeah, so I look after early careers recruitment for Amy. Um, in, terms of, in, in terms of Amy, the way I'd describe us, although we're a huge organisation, we employ about 14,000 people, it doesn't feel like that because the teams that we have are really small and specialist. So it actually feels there's a lot of very small parts of our business that work really well together. And it creates much more, I think, of, a, of an intimate type of feel um, rather than rather than feeling like one of these really large corporate organizations where your role is somewhat insignificant I think because of the size of the teams it just makes it um, a, a lot um, a lot more significant I think the roles and the impact that you can have on those. Yeah. And just describe the different areas then Steve within Amy so where could the graduates degree apprenticeships or, or interns um, what teams could, could they be involved in? No, sure. So we've got three main parts of our um, business. Um, so in no particular order, because I'm aware that we've got some of my colleagues on here, so I don't want to offend <laughs> them one first. Um, but we have um, our consulting part of the business, so Amy Consulting. Um, that's one part, so it's, I'll let them talk about what they do, but it's, it's probably a little bit more around the planning design strategy part of engineering consultancy. Um, we have our transport infrastructure part of the business, which is a little bit more of the engineering side, um, and but dovetails very closely together. So very heavily focused on the rail and highways industries. Um, and we also have our secure infrastructure part of the business, which looks at a lot of the estates facilities management for some of the really um, large secure um, parts of the industry. So the Ministry of Defence, for instance, and, and so forth. But we've also got all of our um, head office functions as well, where we also do recruit people like the graduates, placement students, degree apprentices into. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. And who are you? So tell people about who you are, my love. Oh, right. OK, sorry. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what's important, who you are. <laughs> who, who am I? Um, yeah, so I, I, my name's Steve Perks and I, I head up the early careers recruitment team here at here at Amy. I've been in the business about eight months now. Um, as, as Carla probably mentioned, uh, we go back quite a long way, so much before my, my time with Amy. Um, so I've worked at a couple of other engineering consultancies in the past. So I'm happy to name them because I had positive experiences at both. Um, so I worked at DNV um, and also at SNC Lavalan, who you may know own Atkins. Um, so I've worked there before managing and leading recruitment teams. Um, but my role very much now at Amy is looking at the early career side. So looking at all of our graduate roles, degree apprenticeship roles, apprentice roles, and also our placement and summer internship roles. Perfect. And I'm happy for you to name them, Steve, because they also advertise on Grad Cracker. Boom. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so Steve will be opening up. There's, there's a couple of opportunities actually open on the Amy Hub at the moment. Um, but Steve will be opening up more in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you go onto the Amy Hub, have a look at what's available at the moment, um, and then follow Amy to be alerted for the new opportunities in the coming weeks. So that puts a bit of pressure on Steve. So you need to send those through to me and I'll get them added. Okay, okay, stick it on your student. Sorry, ma'am, ma I'll do that. You do need to. <laughs> this is what our relationship's like. It's like mother and son. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today is a bit of a different one, this webinar. Um, so we've got we've got Madeline and Meredith, who are graduates um, at Amy. And we've also got Dylan, who's the apprentice, uh, degree apprentice, which is really quite exciting. Um, so Dylan, you are the first degree apprentice we've had on, on these webinars. So we are going to delve into your story a little bit more, a little bit later on. Um, but for now, Madeline, if I can start with you and where you went to university and what did you study, please? 
So I went to Canterbury Christchurch Uni, which is in Kent, and I studied history and archaeology. So it was a combined honours degree. Uh, yeah, no problem. And the, the more the STEM side of things, you, there was quite an environmental slant uh, that you wanted yeah, to get into. So wasn't the, ar the archaeology side was quite STEM based. We did a lot of soil analysis. Um, we did GIS. There, there definitely was a STEM aspect to this, that, that the archaeology side. Perfect. Thanks, Madeline. And Meredith, on to you. So where did you go to university and what did you study? So I was down in Exeter um, at the uni there, graduated in 2020. Um, and I actually started out doing a BA in human geography um, in my first year. Um, Realised quite quickly it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but um, luckily it's an identical year for both the human and physical geography courses. So mm. at the end of the first year, I just switched on to the BSc. Um, and from then on, we were doing um, definitely the more, more physical aspects of geography, um, flooding, modelling, cold climate, um, GIS, stuff like that. Thank you very much. And back on to you now, Violenta. Um, your role is a degree apprenticeship um, at Amy. What, what are you doing your degree, degree, degree apprenticeship in and which university are you affiliated with? Um, so my title is Environmental Management Degree Apprentice and we do it with Coventry University. So we go down there about every five weeks or so, yeah. um, just on a far, on a far day block release. Really. So it's, it's good because you get kind of a balance of um, academic work and professional industry work so quite like it yeah definitely and your degree apprenticeship lasts for five years that's right isn't it yes yeah, I think it's five years yeah um yeah, yeah. cool perfect and at the, at the end of it do you know what you're going to to be I'll um, yeah, so say like one of the main reasons why I chose to do a degree apprenticeship was because I'd get a guaranteed job at the end of it so and that was kind of a booster in influencing me to apply to all these degrees degree apprenticeships. Perfect, thanks Dylan. And Jess is going to delve a little bit more into Dylan's story a little bit later on um, in the webinar. But um, for now, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's new to us of these webinars to have Dylan, a degree apprentice um, on, and it's also a new area on the site as well. Um, so if you have a look and um, take a look at the, the degree apprenticeships that we've got on Grad Cracker at the moment, Basically, wherever you want your journey to take you, whether it is the university route or if it's a degree, a degree apprenticeship route, um, Grad Cracker is a place to be. So we've got degree apprenticeships, placements, graduate opportunities. Um, Steve, yeah. types of people. Yes, types of people. <laughs> this yeah. is I, I was just going to just add to to just what what Dylan said and what you what you've just said though. Just to, just before I do that, I won't I won't stop you for long. But it was. It, <laughs> <laughs> don't don't threaten me. It was it was literally just to say that within our organisation, we've taken a really strategic decision that we want that nice blend yeah. between people who've gone away to university and have had that background and people who, for whatever reasons, don't want to do that. They maybe want to get more hands on experience and and kind of earn as they go along as well and, and get that practical experience. And, and we think that people who are coming from both of those routes bring equal value to our organisation. Um, and so from our side, we've got probably this year, especially in some parts of our business, almost equal numbers of yeah. graduate roles and degree apprenticeship um, opportunities. We see that as providing a really good mix for us and also being a lot more inclusive to the types of people we can bring into our organisation. So um, whereas historically we've been a bit more graduate focused and that's given yeah. us some fantastic results, but we just think it makes um, sense to, to, to give ourselves more inclusivity around that. Um, yeah. Sorry, what was your question to me? So. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a really good point to make. So you're allowed to make that point, Steve. I forgive okay. you for that one. Um, so the, the types, I'll have to say, when we and Steve have, have meetings about Grad Cracker, we have to book like two hours out of our diary. So the first hour is just this. And then the next set's like, right, Steve, we need really need to get back down to business. Um, so I was going to go on to the, the types of role um, or the type of person that you're really looking for, Steve. So what would, be, what would make the perfect Amy employee? Okay, well, so... In terms of the types of roles that we have, we've obviously talked a bit about we have graduate roles and they're across a wide range of engineering disciplines predominantly, you know, covering civil, structural, geotechnical, mechanical, electrical, um, environmental science. Um, we have um, quantity surveyors um, as, as well. So there's a whole broad range as well as some of our more business orientated graduate roles. Um, on the degree apprenticeship side, we've got, I think, four main um, degree apprenticeship programmes that we offer 
as a cohort into Evans. We do have some individual ones. We might recruit, for instance, um, a degree apprenticeship quantity surveyor, but we don't tend to recruit in cohorts, whereas we've got four main ones we do. So we offer our rail degree apprenticeship, which is with Sheffield Hallam. Um, it's won awards around inclusivity and, and so forth. It's a fantastic programme. We've also got our civil engineering degree apprenticeship programme. Uh, we just doing some assessment centres for those at the moment um, and we've got as, as as Dylan will testify we've got our environmental and sustainability degree apprenticeship program as well um, which is is fairly new but we're absolutely planning on with that we're just doing some advertising for that I think it's just closed um, and we've also got which will be advertised later um, in the next couple of months a data science um, um, degree apprenticeship program as well within our strategic consulting part of our business so there's quite a nice array of different routes you can come into our organization be it from a graduate discipline or again some of the degree apprenticeship programs um in terms of the um oh, oh sorry and we also obviously take placement students against all of those disciplines and summer internships as well i should say um in terms of the types of people um carla i, I don't want to be too cliche but there isn't a typical type of person um because we we try to be as inclusive as we possibly can so we you know so one of the things that we we look at much more is around behaviors so yes we have some for all of the courses like the one which say dylan has joined but also with all of our graduates we do ask for a minimum level of either academic attainment um or experience in you know in, in maybe doing a level three or something like that but in terms of the um the types of people we, we have specific behavioural traits that we think are most critical for each of the roles and we tend now to be to assessing against those. Maybe I'll touch on that a bit later when we talk about our recruitment process, because I think that will make it more relevant. Um, I mean, I shut up and you don't start glowering yeah. at me. Um, <laughs> but, um, we've got we've got this sixth sense. We've got a code word. It's like I could I could sense it. <laughs> I could sense it was the program. But I think just in terms of the types of um, people that we look for, it's passion, it's enthusiasm, yeah. it's desire, it's yeah. it's it's the energy, and you know, it's it's people who want don't necessarily see the job as a job. We want people yeah. who actually are really interested in what they're doing. Um, so when we're doing our assessments and trying to look at who we bring into final stages, it is very much linked to having people who natural naturally are aligned to the type of work they'll come in and do because we think that that drives motivation it will then drive success and longevity in in the roles and within our organization so there isn't a typical type of person by definition of what we talked about earlier around offering a wide range of routes in we want people from a wide range of backgrounds because ultimately our organization links to the community all of our big clients linked to the heart of communities so we want our organization to reflect the communities that we ultimately serve yeah perfect and then jessica well done steve i am proud of you love you've got a lot in 13 minutes <laughs> jess i'm going to hand over to you to meet um, the grads and dylan yeah so thank you uh steve for that it was very interesting dylan i'm going to come to you first um i know we're putting a lot of focus at the, at the beginning of this webinar on degree apprenticeships but could you just tell us a bit about your role and how it works you've mentioned obviously you, you're going into coventry yeah. what does that look like and how does that work with your current role at emmy um so obviously my job title is environmental management practitioning degree apprentice i think um so my, my, my lab manager is an ecologist, so I've been doing mostly um, ecological based work um, around the, AC, the A66. Um, so that's been pretty interesting because I did biology A level, so I've done quite a bit of ecology, so I'm quite comfortable doing that. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I like about it is that I kind of have the opportunity to explore different disciplines in the future. So I've got some things lined up in air quality, et cetera, for um, when we get back into office, when we get on, on, on site. So um, yeah, can, what else did you ask me, sorry? How does it work with um, your day-to-day, kind of day -day? yeah. yeah. How many days are you in uni? And um, so it's a, it's a block release with the university. So I go there every five weeks at the moment. Um, and we actually, we're going in, so it's in person, it's not online. Um, so that's good. We only go there for about four days though. So 
Um, it's pretty intense when we're there because obviously we're only there every five weeks. Um, but it's good to get like a, a mixture of academic work and um, industry work. So I quite enjoy it. Yeah, hundred percent. And this is, you know, for the students that are listening, I always talk about gaining experience. You know, if you're doing a, a bachelor's degree and you get the chance to get some work at, at experience whilst at university, it's massively beneficial. Just like exactly what you said, Dylan, to get that, you know, industry experience as well as the academic experience. So very interesting. I'm guessing you're enjoying it, Dylan. Yeah, you're not yeah, having great. any regrets. No, no, not at all, no. Fantastic, good stuff. Um, Madeline, I'm going to come to you next. I can't believe you asked him that. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> you you, no, you no, think I've asked so about Amy, but I mean, in terms of you know making that decision because it's quite a big decision, isn't it? Early on, that's what I meant, <laughs> Steve. I promise, it's not. Hey, put your sound back on mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, Madeline, coming to you. <laughs> Maybe um, same question. So, if you could just tell us a bit about your role and what it's been like since you graduated. Yeah, so I work in the same team as Dylan. Um, so I am a graduate environmentalist um, with a specific interest in developing her ecological skills. So I'm wanting to look into botany and UK habitat management. Um, so things along those lines. So, but I'm also a generalist. So I do have the opportunity to do other things within Amy. So I'm doing project management at the same time. So I'm able to develop both my STEM skills and then my more discipline different disciplines so yes yeah, and tell us a bit about the teams that you're working in and what's kind of your day-to-day -day life like I'm guessing you're working from home at the moment um I am but because I'm quite interested in oncology and wanting to train to be an ecologist of some form uh, I do do a lot of site work um so last year I was pretty much up on the A66 quite a bit doing phase one habitat surveys yeah. um, and different things like that. So it's definitely not just desk based um, yeah. during the winter. It probably is. But during the summer, I'd be out on site most of the time. I can imagine so. I wouldn't want to be up on the S66 in the middle of winter either. I was up there last winter. Oh, was it? The snow and it it was um interesting <laughs> it was cold yeah but it's good to be able to not just be desk based to be able yeah. to go out on site and see a project from the beginning hopefully through to some form of completion so i would yeah ecology is i i rate ecology a lot <laughs> Our, our boss lives up in Cumbria, doesn't he, Jess? And yeah. Yeah, so he'll, he'll show us the weather. So up there, it could be like snowing. And down here, it. it's just like, what is sun, sunny skies? So what's going on? I, so, yeah. I, I was messaging my, my colleagues and being like, look at the depth of the snow outside. <laughs> yeah. They were like, oh, it's bright, bright winter sun here. I'm like, yeah. Right. That's why they have those poles, don't they? Those so oh. they can see where the road is, the black and white poles, don't they? Yeah, and they've got the snow gates as well. Yes. So you know when the snow gates are closed that you're in trouble. But yeah, yeah. No, so it's not just desk based The weather system up there. Um, and now then just to ask about your kind of team or what you're working. Because Steve, you mentioned about quite small groups and it feels quite intimate. You know, you can get to know everyone. Is that what it's like for you? Um, yeah, it is. So especially it's kind of, divided regionally in our team so you've got like the north you've got midlands etc and you do, do get to spend time with other ones but yeah you you are quite a close-knit group of people um and you do get to know especially with site work you get to know your team quite well because you spend a lot of time with them um outside and doing yeah so yeah it's, it's close-knit but it's nice yeah yeah definitely. yeah perfect Okay, Meredith, I'm going to come to you. Similar question, if you could tell us a bit about your role and what life is like for you on the grad programme. Yeah, so um, my role is called an environmental um, graduate, similar, similar to Madeline. I'm a bit of a generalist, to be honest with you. Um, so I work in the secure infrastructure um, business. So our business unit does the facilities management, the estates management of um, the MOD sites, um, a lot of the prisons and schools and local authority buildings. Um, and then within secure infrastructure, I sit within the sustainability team, um, mm. which is really quite a small team compared to other environmental teams in different business units. Um, so within my team, there's the, the head of sustainability. And then we have three environmental managers, um, a bidding specialist who does all of the work winning stuff. And then 
um, me and I'm a, I'm a bit of a floater dependent on what projects I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so when I started with Amy, I was originally doing social value. So that kind of sat quite nicely under the sustainability banner. Um, and then that was more kind of strategy based. So I was doing stuff like reports um, and writing the social value strategy. And then that kind of developed into um, carbon strategy stuff and validating carbon data. Um, and then since then, I've been doing more um, environmental management kind of on the ground with our ops teams. Um, obviously, when COVID allows and getting out and doing audits and, and working with um, the, the guys who are doing the estate management on the ground. And then in terms of um, your kind of balance of being out and, you know, like I said, being with those people, you know, managing mm -hmm. on the ground stuff to being in the office. How does that work? Do you enjoy um, one or the other? To be honest, it's it's almost all or nothing. So for the first um, just under year, I was basically totally home based um, during I think it was the third COVID lockdown. I started just before the second one. So we're, I was at home for, um, yeah, the first 12 months um, doing the social value stuff and the strategy stuff. And then when I started doing more of the compliance environmental management stuff, then I was out for four days a week. Um, and that involved a lot of traveling. Um, so it was, it was good. I sort of slightly reached the end of my tether working from home when, um, I was able to go out on site and then when I finished that project so I was quite relieved to be back at home a bit and not having to do the traveling yeah. so I, I enjoyed both whilst there whilst I was doing them um, but yeah instead of it being kind of a standard mix all the time it's for me it's been one or the other but I think moving forward it will be more of a you know two or three days at home and then and then the others out on site or vice versa so brilliant good it's funny isn't it how we feel like at the moment we look at our lives on what lockdown was it mm -hmm. <laughs> that's <laughs> depressing oh <laughs> it's crazy the world we live in now yeah. um so next sorry still we're gonna say something no no he's not allowed to say anything yet <laughs> <laughs> we've got a code word <laughs> and then you can say something you have been good you're a good boy <laughs> you good boy, good boy. Don't say um, that roof is something jumping up. <laughs> Rufus is Steve's dog, by the way. It's not something random. Doofus, oh. doofus. Yeah, gorgeous dog. Um, I know we had it. If only if, if only we went live ten minutes before, we would have been bring our pets to the you know webinar, wasn't it? We had everyone's dogs and. <laughs> it's lovely. Anyway, so next one, talk about projects. So Dylan, I'm going to come back to you. Um, if you could tell us a bit about either your favourite project or maybe a project that you're working on at the moment and tell us a bit about it in a bit more detail. Yeah, so when The Apprentices joined, we all got assigned to different projects. So I was assigned to the ACT6 project um, and I only, only got mobilised onto the project fairly recently. So I've not done loads and loads of work on it. But from what I have done, I've done quite a lot of ecological work, like I mentioned before. Um, I can go into detail, but it will probably take too long. So, um, traffic whilst I've done on the AC66. Um, but yeah, it's just mainly ecological stuff, to be honest, so far. So, I've just been working very closely with the ENS team and the, e the ecology team within the ENS team. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing mainly. So, Madeline and Dylan, is there any crossover between your work um, and the projects that you're working on? Or... Yeah, there will be. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. You're pro are you working out of York at the moment? Is that yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm not. So, not, not well, not but, not. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so, a couple of the degree apprentices are linked with the work that I also work on, which is a project called Sheffield Streets Ahead. Okay. Um, and other ones, but yeah, there there is crossover. Who's um with line managers and teams because they're based in the north, so he's yeah. within the team that I work out of. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I see. So Dylan, I guess, you know, from Coventry, you're in York. Yay, we're in York. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, you're not Carla, are you? Um, and up to A66, you know, um, you do quite a bit of travelling. And how yeah, do you I mean, that? I'm not actually, be, we've just finished, well, we just finished the A66, A66 stuff, so I'm not going to be going up there. And I've not, not actually been there before, but I was kind of just doing remote working. I see. Um, but... I'm going up to Durham, I think, next month to do some air quality service. So that's that's not ecology, obviously. So we're doing some multidisciplinary work. Um, 
Yeah, we, we just get trains down to Coventry like every five weeks, so it's not as much traveling as you think. And I think okay. we quite enjoy doing it as well because sometimes we sometimes we work from, we work from home, so it's nice to, to get out and travel a bit. So yeah, yeah, definitely, I can imagine that. And you know, yeah. again, you're working on a project, so it's probably nice to actually see what's actually going on there. Yeah. For sure, yeah. environment like so definitely um so same question for you madeline if you could tell us about a favorite project that you've worked on before or something you're working on now um so the a66 has been a fabulous opportunity in terms of gaining a lot of experience and as i said i worked up there quite a bit last summer mm-hmm. um so it does being an ecologist or i'm not saying i am an ecologist i'm working towards that one but day. one day <laughs> um it does involve quite a bit of traveling as per your last query but um one project that i'm currently working on which does link in with uh the ministry of justice is we're looking at how we can improve um certain sites and their basically their biodiversity levels there mm-hmm. and that's really interesting again um, because you're actually you're creating something and you've got an input within a project and that i'm finding very very interesting yeah that's probably my favorite one at the moment <laughs> And making a positive change and then I can imagine yeah. then you know if it works you could then roll it out into other projects and yeah yeah definitely it's nice to see an outcome yeah you don't always yeah. you don't always see that side of things so the a66 yes you're working on it but you won't necessarily see the final the, the outcome yeah but, so to speak but with the moj and other things you are seeing that and you are seeing that your work is being put to use I would say is probably the best way to describe it so yeah I would say that's that's something that I'm really interested in at the moment. Do you you go on is it like a rotation the graduate program then so you mentioned like the AC6 for example or do do you move around the business every so often or Um, is it just based on projects how does that all work? It's mainly based on projects so one of the other ones that I work on because I work out of the our Sheffield office (laughs) is the Sheffield streets ahead so that just makes sense I'm in the locality um and that's just how that's fallen. But it also depends on what you you be interested in. So I made it clear that I was interested in being doing ecology and developing that side of things. So you do try and link up programs to what you're you are interested in. Um, so I, yeah, I wouldn't say there's a rotation, but there's definitely a degree of if you're interested in it. Okay, here's this here's this project. Mm-hmm. So and is, is that quite similar to the degree apprenticeship then I'm guessing so you, it was like different projects as well yeah yeah we yeah. can we have quite a lot of freedom within what we choose to do I just happen to do mostly ecology because my manager's an ecologist so it just works out yeah. I enjoy doing it so yeah yeah perfect and Meredith same question projects or favorite project you've worked on so far yeah so I think um one of the big projects that I was working on last year that's sort of just started to wrap up now um has been our electric vehicles transition um so that was kind of focused within our own business unit we've got about 500 or so vans um all diesel or petrol and obviously wanting to transition them to electric alternatives um and it's pretty complex challenge i think kind of when you see it on the news um it comes across like pretty easy just plug in some charges get the vans and you're good to go Um, But that was kind of quite a multidisciplinary project. We were working with um, Amy Fleet sort of at group level and within our business unit, but then also needing to kind of take into account um, the the guys who are actually driving the vans on the grounds, like their views and and how they operate. Um, And it's actually the the project that we we got so far sort of down the road in designing a strategy. And that's actually been picked up um, at group level now and is going to be rolled out hopefully across all of the different business units obviously will need some tweaking um yeah. so kind of just involved from like a supporting level now um but it was really good to almost take a project that I didn't really have any well I didn't have any prior knowledge or experience in electric vehicles or anything like that and to really just take it from the ground and be given that responsibility and run with it and and sort of be liaising with different people within Amy but also external partners as well and obviously we need you know suppliers and our supply chain and stuff like that so yeah that was really interesting that's amazing well done I can imagine that as a you know big part where you think oh pat yourself on the back you know that's yeah. such a positive change and also Steve I can imagine for students that are listening these are the kind of um uh, you know when you mentioned it about uh, passion and interest you know if you could talk about stuff like this you know in your interview and how you want to drive oh, you know, all this the, these sustainability thoughts and projects forward 
and you know what their opinions on that are that's the kind of stuff you probably want to hear isn't it absolutely and I think that's what makes the candidates that we ultimately take on stand out um it's those who just instinctively know what they want to do and why they want to do it with us and and how they can apply their passion and their interests to that role um and I, I think that it's it is a challenge and I think we're also very empathetic to the fact that sometimes people don't know necessarily what they want to do and yeah. don't understand maybe what they could get involved in yeah. um, I'm sure some of the projects that the guys have been involved in they probably didn't even know existed before they joined us but uh, getting involved in those they can see how they can really apply that passion and those interests um, to the role and um, you know, I, I think that, that you're absolutely right in something you mentioned earlier. Some of the pieces of work we do are truly transformational. You know, mm-hmm. we've we've touched a lot because of the nature of the work around the A66, but we do a lot from the rail side with the Trans-Pennine, um, you know, route upgrade. So you probably, if you're in the north, you'll know about the this massive multi-billion pound project that's going on. And we're at the heart of that with a number of other organisations, just as an example. And it's um, it's all about improving people's lives. And that's why I mentioned about we want people who feel part of that because they know it will benefit the communities that they work within. And it's, you know, that that sort of passion that um, coming to it and knowing, yeah, I, this is how I want to make a difference. Mm. We really want people who, who bring those types of attitudes and behaviours. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, students that listen and think about the projects that Amy are working on, you know, what are they involved in? Does it interest you? And like I say, it's a great topic to talk about when you get to meet Steve at the interview process. It's a win-win both, both for both sides, isn't it? Yeah, Steve, it's definitely a win-win. I think we're going to talk about um, training and development now. Steve, did you want the, the grads to, to cover this question? Just what, what training, you know, what opportunities are open to them, uh, like support training everything around that or did you want to mention something yeah I mean I, I can probably talk about some of the things we do more centrally which are more the yes. non-technical development but maybe if um you know what one of the guys can maybe pick up what they've experienced more from a professional and technical development along the chartership route or getting yourself through your your, your degree apprenticeship so yeah. And everyone who joins one of our early careers programs joins our early careers community. Um, it's, I think it's currently just over 300 people in it at the moment, and it will grow massively uh, this year as part of the recruitment we're doing. Um, but we we provide a number of things. One is, I think, and it's all development, so I'm not going to sit here because otherwise I think some of our current ones will go... It's not quite that brilliant. So we don't want to claim this is perfect. It's very much a work in progress and something that we've taken feedback on and are looking to improve. But we've got various development modules that we enable people to come and join. And they will be around what I would call, I think some people call it soft skills, but I think it's professional skills. It's around creating the the more rounded individual, regardless of what route they come in. So things like we do like insights training, which is around identifying your 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 personality how you engage with other people um what type of mixing good you know well-performing project teams all of that to identify communication styles behavioral styles and so on we put a lot of stock on that because we all work as part of project teams you know it's very rare that one person will go off and do something purely in isolation so being able to work together communicate engage and get the best out of each other is really important to us um, we also provide another module which is around career planning and it should because i know that sometimes it hasn't always happened but it should happen at the beginning of the program and then six months before the end of the program so it's almost what are you trying to do where are you trying to go let's set you some objectives and then towards the end of your program with us, it's what next? What what do you want to now develop into? What can we develop you further? Because I think in some organisations, there's a bit of a cliff edge. You kind of have all of this structured training and development whilst you're on one of our programmes. And then there's the risk that you just drop off into the, the abyss with everybody else in it. Um, and I think we're trying to identify, so what, what is the next step before we get to there? Um, but we also offer some other modules, just very briefly, so around business acumen, um, commercial acumen and financial awareness. And also we've got a new one we're rolling out for our graduates this year called Change, which is, I think, looking at not just 
I guess, the broader sense of change, but around how it can affect organisations, both our customers and also us as a, as, a, as a provider to those, to try to, again, make those skills more rounded. And I know we also, for our, um, our apprentices as well, offer a life skills um, module. Um, and sometimes that's because some of our degree apprentices and apprentices who come in may be a little bit younger, um, mm -hmm. and maybe they haven't maybe had the experience of going away to university and some of those life skills that that can bring. So we do look at some of the things around networking, um, financial management as well, which I think is really important, you know, for, for people to be able to manage their own finances and understand some of those things. So we've got a range of those, but it's, it's constantly evolving. I know we're looking at that at the moment to see how better can we support people. And also our placement students who come in as well, they also get the benefit of the insights and also the career planning modules as well, because we think if they're coming in to join us for a year, it's really important that we give them that opportunity to, to benefit from that and to be able to take that away with them, either whether they come back at the end of their studies or whether or not they go somewhere else at the end of that as well. But for us, we think that's, they're, they're really good modules to, um, to have. So from a training point of view, they're definitely things that we we provide. But the other thing just linked to that um, is we do want our early careers community to act almost as that peer-to-peer -peer networking group yeah. and that support yeah. group as well. Um, I think we've got some work to do on that in terms of how we promote it, how we um, provide and make that more accessible to everybody as, it, as we grow and evolve. Um, but we, we really see the huge benefit in not just having buddies, mentors, managers locally, but having other people who maybe are on those modules able to, and, and, or on those programmes, be able to support each other and having that support network as well. I know Steve, you're working really hard out about all the learning and development and all the different um, things that the students can do. So yes, it's going to be grand for this year. So thanks, Steve. And um, Madeline, just to, just to link you in a little bit there. So you actually did a, a placement with Amy, didn't you, before you came back as a graduate? That, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I started in 2019, did a year and then went on to the grad programme. So what, I know Jess, you're going to love me for asking this question, but so what, what kind of training development did you get on, on your internship, which then helped you through your final years at university and then become a graduate at Amy? Um, so the year was, um, so I got training such as uh, we did, I did my personal track safety, um, yeah. which enabled me to work on the railway, mm -hmm. um, which my other fellow placement student also got to do um you basically you just got not tutored but you got mentored in a way that provided you with the skills to yeah come back and do the grad role or go and undo different things so I say as a grad I was going to mention the stuff that Steve had said which was like the insights thing I found that really useful because it it taught you so much more about working in a team and how all the different personalities work yeah. but definitely during that placement year it was just more about be, kind of being mentored and seeing how my skills can then fit into a new role at the company if that makes it, sense it, it makes perfect <laughs> sense yeah definitely so do you think that by doing an internship that helped you through your final year at university then did it help you know like time skills and and just doing that yeah, in the last... it's invaluable yeah. it's invaluable yeah. it, it teaches you so much more than just not just having a job or having a role but marrying those two aspects of your world together yeah. um mm. so yeah i would say i 100 percent would recommend a placement student year or just even an internship it, ju it does provide you with a very different concept of the world and then you can have provide like work that into your next role or wherever that is yeah. wherever you go that's yeah <laughs> but two, we've got two nodding people from Jess and Steve there so I think they agree with you Madeline <laughs> and from from um Steve writing notes oh here we go and um, so from here from your point of view you are naughty so from your point of view Madeline from um as a graduate you know Steve's mentioned like the professional development and the professional training that you can get from a technical point of view then as a graduate what is the the piece of training that's really stood out for you and, and how was it delivered and how is that going to um better you moving forward um, so I was going to say from a technical point of view, because I want to work 
within ecology we've done yeah. so i've done my personal track safety so i can work on railways yeah. um i've also done first aid training for site that's invaluable um and then we've also done working near water because again if i'm out doing an otter survey or something that's near a river you have to be safe in that and so i've done working near water which is a very fun day you do jump in a freezing cold lake and have to learn to defend some swim, but it's good fun at the same time. Um, so yeah, there's definitely lots of different opportunities, but also from a non-technical side of things, the modules that do get put on, I would say just use it to your advantage because you learn so much more about teamwork and project management and things like that. And yeah, so there's, there's a wide range of training that you can do. Perfect, thank you. Steve, did you want to say something? <laughs> you're allowed it's a good word <laughs> no comment um meredith on to you so what what training piece technical training have you had that you've enjoyed the most mm -hmm. so um i'm currently doing my certificate in environmental management with um aima so once i finish that i'll be an environmental practitioner uh, which I, I think off the top of my head is one level below chartership. And I think you kind of have to be in the industry for a couple of years before you can even think about doing um, the course for being a chartered environmentalist. Um, but I think the, the thing that I found so valuable about the training that I've been doing, and, and that's been funded by Amy, um, and I, I had the scope to choose what course I wanted to do for myself, which was really good. And obviously the support from my people manager and the rest of the team to kind of guide me towards what was the right thing to do. Um, the course that I've been doing is a, an applied learning um, technique. So I'm kind of learning about the wider um, principles of sustainability and environmental and energy management systems, innovation, all stuff like that. Um, but then I have to apply that to the work that I'm doing. And then in order to get onto the next level, I actually have to submit work based evidence. So it's really good to kind of be learning all these skills like on paper and then and then looking back and reflecting on my own work and seeing how I've done, how I've implemented those skills myself um, in order to pass each module. So I think I'm about 60 percent of the way through um, and that's a 12 to 18 month course. I think um, it's led by an external provider, but obviously have the full support of my team and, and my team have just been invaluable in, in helping me out and kind of um supporting me through it so yeah that's that's definitely been the most useful um big chunk of training that I've done um but just to echo on what Steve was saying about the, the sort of soft skills and the professional skills that we learn through the insights training um the training as as Madeline said was super useful especially the insights kind of working working out how best to communicate with your team and, and working out different personalities and stuff like that um but sort of like a secondary effect that I found really useful from doing the training was that was what um, kind of bonded my graduate cohort together. So there was originally nine of us and then um, another five joined. So we're now 14 with an SI. Um, and we obviously do all of our training together. And especially during COVID, because none of us could meet, like these were the only times that we could kind of engage with other grads. Um, and now I'm sort of 15, 15 months in, I think 14, 15 months. Um, and we've got such a strong cohort within um, SI and everyone can reach out to anyone for help and I think that's really what Amy were we're trying to trying to get us all to do yeah. and obviously it was a challenge because of COVID and working virtually and also because we're spread between I think the furthest north um, there's a couple of grads in Glasgow and then down to London so we're all, all over the place and we've only been able to meet um, I think three times um, throughout the the course but you wouldn't know that when you kind of see yeah. us interact so I think that was like a really nice side effect of all the training that we've done um definitely oh, so cool. how, how, do you, how do you manage that then so how do you manage the training um alongside your you know your day-to-day -day work that you have to do yeah so um the IEMA courses it takes a big chunk of time to be honest yeah. I, I think I sort of underestimated the commitment before before doing it but I suppose you never really know what you're getting into until you start doing it um but obviously my team want me to succeed in it and, and so far I've been able to complete the vast majority you know during um, work and, and my team see that as a priority for me to develop and and to gain those skills there is the occasional bit that I do you know at the weekends or after work but if it was ever to get um, too much my my boss's boss actually said to me you know if it gets too much you let me know and we, and we switch things around you know oh, they, they want us to succeed they want us to have the the time to do that 
um yeah. so it's it's been really manageable to be honest brilliant and is your grand plan i'm guessing to go on and achieve getting chartership in the future yeah i think so i'm not entirely sure what i want to specialize in at the moment um yeah. and that's quite quite a nice thing about the team that i'm in um we're quite a general team and because we're so small you know if there's carbon stuff that needs doing someone picks it up if there's ecology stuff that needs doing someone picks it up um, so I've kind of been able to experience a couple of different things. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to eventually become chartered. Um, yeah. yeah, but I don't know what will come between now and then, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. no, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. And, and Dylan, on to you. So I'm guessing that you've got a complete mix of, of, of practical and academic training that you experience. Yeah, um, obviously I'm not being with the company for long. I've only been here for about five months or so. Um, yeah. But I get a good mix of training because obviously we get um, academic training in university, which is very different to the training in which I get in work. Um, so I've I did some firewarding training a few weeks ago, which was interesting for I was like a, just a, a day class. So that yeah. was something you've know, not done that before, so it was quite new and interesting. Yeah. Um, also, there's like mandatory classes which we have to do um, before you can go on site and before you start projects. So they cover like health and safety um all sorts really so that's interesting coming from like an a-level background just coming into the industry and like um, learning what you have to do really it's, it's, it's good to it's good to do I'm trying to think what else i've been doing um is it quite well you're thinking Dylan, is it quite similar to meredith then that you have is, is there a group of you that do all the training together um no it depends like it depends what the training is so with yeah. the firewarding thing it was just me and another apprentice who went into um like a hotel and it was like a, a company-wide thing so you've got people that were like um like my boss's boss was there and there was yeah. about 20 of us I think and it was just like an ex-military guy just um showing us slides we got like a, like a certificate at the end of it oh brilliant um, I think of the uh, formal training that I've done yeah I'm not I'm not done too much because I'm not being for the company for long but um yeah, no, no, yeah. I bet they've got the grand plans for you in the future with lots and lots of yeah, training yeah for sure yeah have you got anything booked in? Is there any training in the future that you think, oh, I'm looking forward to doing that? Um, not the training, but I'm doing some air quality surveys and some like um, air quality stuff in Durham yeah. next month. So that should be pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Dylan, can I ask about responsibility? Because I can hear already from Meredith and you talk about this fantastic project you're doing with electric cars and looking at your fleets there. You've been given responsibility quite early on. Dylan, would you say the same for a graduate uh, apprenticeship? Would you say you've been given responsibility on your projects and you feel like, you know, you're really part of the team? Yeah, for sure. That's why I was quite surprised, to be honest, because obviously I'm not, I didn't go to university, so I don't have a degree in the specific area which I'm working in, but um, I feel like you kind of get given work according to how you perform. Um, so I feel like, well, I've been working on the ACC 66 recently, so we've been doing lots of ecology work with that. I just kind of work within the team and work um, like along along with my boss and the graduates as well. So we kind of just work as a as a team really, but it's not like I'm doing, it's not like I'm just making coffees or whatever. I'm, I'm, actually, yeah, doing, yeah. I'm actually doing work in, putting work in. So it is good. And I was surprised to be fair with the amount of work that I've been doing, I thought. Because obviously working from home at the moment, I don't think I'll have too much work, but I'm very busy. I'm always doing stuff and working with the team. So it's it's, it's a good mix. I like it. Well done, you. Um, our next question would be future plans. Like, like I say, I know you've only been there five months, so it might feel a bit premature to ask this question. But what do you think your career is looking like with Amy and where can you imagine yourself going um, already uh, with the company? Yeah, um, so I, obviously I just started, so I'm not sure if I want to specialise in something, I'd be a generalist. I'm thinking more on the generalist side of things at the moment, which is ironic because I've been doing just ecology, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I've kind of just been optimistic. So I've got, I've got five years to decide, really, because it's a five-year-long car, so I can just decide when I feel like it. But that's the thing I, I like about working with Amy. They're quite um, free in terms of, um, there's a lot of freedom in terms of which discipline I choose to work within. So if I wanted to do like some archaeology work or some air quality work I could just met I could email someone and I could be doing some work for them within a day so that's the thing that I like about it um so in the future i have kind of just I think I'm, my aim is to just explore different disciplines and kind of get a feel for what I like to do and for what I enjoy um yeah. so that's yeah. my plan really to just um find what I like to do and maybe just specialize in that 
I think that's, that's important, isn't it? Just experience, as I think you're going to say the same thing, love, experience yeah. everything that you can possibly experience in the next five years and then think, oh, actually, I want to do it, yeah. XYZ. Um, so, yeah, that's, that would be my plan if I were you. Yeah, that's and Madeline and Meredith, same kind of question. So Madeline, I'll come to you first, but a five-year plan or future plans. Um, I know you've mentioned about becoming an ecologist. No. Is, yeah. Um, I think you've hit the nail on the head and it's actually on my notes of experience as much as you can and use the yeah. opportunities to get that experience. And then you'll make a much better and more informed decision at the end of it because even if you do something and you realize that you don't like it that's still valuable it's still yeah, teaching it is, yeah. Yeah. you don't yeah. want to do that um yeah. so i'm currently thinking and it could change but i've been able to do quite a bit of project management or environmental coordination re recently so my future plan is to maybe kind of do a bit of a dual career and do ecology and project management at the same time um but that's only purely through being able to experience that which Amy is very good for is it allows you to have that experience and you have the projects to have that experience um so yeah I've, I've kind of got a plan but I think the main point is just use whatever role you go into for experience and just make the most of it yeah go into it with a positive mindset yeah, yeah. Like gone through yeah I was just going to, even if you realise you don't like it, it's exactly. still, you've still come to a decision. So yeah, you've got yeah. that experience and no one can take that from you then. Um, Meredith, I'm guessing it might be a very similar answer. And I know you've mentioned about becoming chartered and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, your future plans. Yeah. So to be honest, it's a little uncertain at the moment, sort of short term future, um, because I've still got... Um, like nine or 10 months left on the grad scheme. Um, and hopefully I'm going to fit two different style projects into that period. One more energy-based maybe, and then um, another potentially a move to consulting. Um, because I don't know if people have picked up from what the three of us have spoken about, but my environmental team is quite small um, and the environment and sustainability team in, in consulting is huge in comparison. I think there's over a hundred people and there's oh, like five or six awesome. of us. Yeah. Um, and and then in consulting, you have the specialist disciplines like air quality and ecology. Um, so I'm hoping to potentially try some ecology stuff. Um, funny that three of us might end up doing ecology. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm hoping to try some of that. And then that that will take me to the end of the grad scheme. And and then, like Madeline said, maybe just carry down, carry on in that, that generalist route um, until I figure out what what is I want to do. Um, I think the impression I've got from kind of networking with other environmental people um in particular is kind of it's it's quite standard for when you're a bit younger to just go down that generalist route and you'll sort of fall into whatever it is that you're passionate about um everyone sort of said don't panic that you don't know even though you've done you know 15 months in the environmental sector um but I think one of the most important things for that is just networking um and that's another thing that I really want to gain from potentially move to consulting is just networking with different environmentalists as much as the guys that I've networked with in my own BU are, are so valuable. We are just such a small team. And obviously with that, you know, kind of experiences that they've been through are, are slightly like the is limited number of people to kind of say, what, how did you do this? Where did you go from this? Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that a move to consulting will kind of clear some things up in terms of what I want to do and, and kind of highlight different options that I could do. Perfect. That sounds good, isn't it? Perfect, perfect ending. And key, key um, benefits, so what do you think, you know, really highlights, Amy, to you that you'd want to sh showcase to, to the students watching this webinar? Um, Dylan, do you want to start first? So what would you think was the, one of the key benefits for, for um, Amy? It's kind of echoing, echoing on from what Steve mentioned before. I feel like they're quite democratic in terms of um, ways to improve. Like the, I feel like they're always looking for ways to improve the company. So we'll have often have surveys sent to us and um about different things and we can kind of uh, like what we want to do um and obviously it's a big company so it goes without saying that there's always new work coming in so you're never going to be barred you're always going to have um a busy desk aren't you so um it's good that's, that's what i like about amy and also like what um meredith mentioned before about how the ens team is so big within amy you just get you get the opportunity to network and meet lots of new people which is a really important thing as an apprentice and as a graduate because yeah. You kind of have future people to talk to when you need 
assistants that are maybe advising a particular sector which you don't have much experience in. So it's good in terms of meeting people and getting more experience just because it's such a big company. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say is a good thing. Yeah, lots of different choice and options. Thanks, Dylan. And um, Madeline, so what would you say is key benefit? Um, I think echoing what I'd said previously, because you've given the opportunity and you are given the opportunity to experience and do different projects. And as it said, it's, it's a big company and you do have these opportunities come in. That to me would be my biggest selling point is it will give you the experience and the knowledge to then plan your career and enhance your career. Um, so that for that, 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 yeah, that's what I'd say. It's just, it gives you the opportunity to be engaged and develop. And I think that's invaluable for such young people in their careers. Of course it is, yeah. Can experience, I, experience. Carla, because it's funny, isn't it? I think students sometimes, when they're looking at organisations, you think, oh, do I look, go want to work for a large organisation or do I want to work for a small organisation? But the thing I'm starting to learn with him is almost like, yeah, you've got the benefit of working for a large organisation, but a bit like what you said, Meredith, you're almost, you could potentially be in a team which is super small, super tight. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, you're working with everyone, you know each other, you know, what everyone's doing all day, every day, to then working into a large team when there could be 100 people, like you say. And that's almost another beauty of working in a large organization and maybe as an outsider didn't really realize that you could be in these super small teams and feel like you're actually working for a really small company with only yeah. five people in it um it's benefit of both worlds isn't it but yeah. then it's, it's like the graduate community as well like Meredith mentioned so it's not just like your, your team that you're in there's the graduate team or the degree apprenticeship yeah. team as well isn't it this was, seems to be quite a few different um networking um opportunities there would, would you kind of say something similar, Meredith, or did you want to add something different to Madeline and Dylan? Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, yeah. what what both of them they've said is is so true. Um, the thing that I was going to say actually was I don't know if it's the case that it happens across um, all of the graduates, but certainly in our business unit, we um, are all given a business mentor, um, and that's yeah. someone from the senior leadership team. Um, so I actually had the um, managing director of my business unit as. Wow my business mentor which is a bit scary to start with <laughs> um but he's been just so so valuable in um kind of offering support and guidance and obviously there's not a direct crossover between what I do day to day and what he does day to day um but just kind of talking through skills like leadership presentation skills but also just networking and and learning more about the business as a whole I found that really useful um, and my business, actually, uh, my business mentor actually left the business just before Christmas, but um, he's agreed to continue mentoring me kind of oh, externally. Wow. So whilst Amy have, have replaced him internally, so I now have a different mentor who's actually slightly more aligned to the work that I do. So I guess that's useful. Um, yeah. They've kind of given me that connection that I was able to form within such a short space of time that we're actually able to keep that going, even though he's no longer with the business. So I just think it just shows Amy's really kind of pushing for all of the graduates to network and make those connections and the bottom line is they just want us to succeed and, and they'll kind of do anything to ensure that that happens. Yeah I think I mean the, the person that you've just mentioned is obviously passionate about Amy and passionate about graduates and bringing them along as well oh that's really mm. good to hear perfect thanks Meredith. Mr Perks what Hello. would you like to finish Ella, Ella what would you anything that you want to finish off with any hints and tips anything exciting um, well, I, I, I don't think you need me. I think I think the guys have um, have really explained it. We well. just need. I, we always need you. Well, you say that now. We um, do. But but I, I think just a couple of things is that we do have the opportunity as well to work on some really transformational projects. I mentioned a couple yeah. of them earlier, but I think that that always looks good on people's CVs to be able to say you've worked on something which is really going to be highly regarded, really well known out there, and also the complexity of those projects and the size of those projects has a certain I think value in the marketplace as well so I think that's really really useful from from that side I think there's just a couple of other things that just wanted to quickly add as well just in terms of some of the wider support we've touched on some of the buddy and mentors I think really eloquently but um, we also have um, our affinity groups as well and also our health and well-being ambassadors we take those things incredibly seriously to try to drive 
and um, people feeling as though they're supported properly in the business for whatever reasons. Um, we think that's incredibly important for our organisation um, to help us drive that inclusivity and our diversity agenda as well. Um, so we think that's um, at the heart of what we do. We also, I think, do try to get our early careers communities working well together for like we have a conference once a year where we yeah. talk about you know specific issues which was normally driven and run by by them um, I think it was last was it November December time um, mm -hmm. that the last one was I, I, I forget now um, but we also um, have um, a, an annual charity which we do some fundraising events it's much much more coordinated across our organization and I think it brings those groups together and helps forge those different relationships which can be incredibly valuable for networking but also for support as well um, and the only other thing i was going to mention is because we've obviously got a lot of our people who've talked about the north of england we are genuinely a U well a, a uk-wide um organization and we've got offices as well in northern ireland so it's uh we've got offices right across um the region it just so happens we've talked quite a bit about the north of england i think today um but we do have huge hubs around the the south of england midlands and also in scotland and in northern ireland as well Oh, thanks for that all night. It's back northern, Steve. Talk about northern. We've been saying this all along. They're obviously my favourites, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Good answer, my love. Good answer. No, joking aside, so yeah, Amy has is based around the UK. Um, you do have opportunities, or you're going to be open opportunities, obviously, Scotland and um, the South West. I know that's a big, big area for you as well, Steve, isn't it? That you wanted to push. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. It's been brilliant as a webinar today. And um, for the students who are watching, whatever your route into doing doing um, a degree and then becoming a graduate or whichever you decide to do. Gradcracker has the opportunities, so the degree opportunities, the internships, then become a graduate or your graduate positions as well. So get onto Gradcracker. There are thousands of opportunities that you can still um, apply to. Follow Amy, see we'll be opening those next week at some point or the next coming weeks. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt with that. Um, and this webinar will be live on the Amy Hub tomorrow. And then we'll break it down into bite-sized chunks um, tomorrow. And um, it'll be on the Career Centre and the Hub. So thank you very much, Mr. Perch. You've been very well behaved. And Madeline, Meredith and Dylan, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. And I just wanted to mention about an article as well that, um, yes, degree yeah. apprenticeship article. Thank you, my right hand lady. Um, so Hannah, our colleague, has also done a fantastic article about degree apprenticeships, offering like loads of hints and tips and advice about um, what, the, what they actually are as well. And um, so that will be live on the degree apprenticeship search next week. So have a look out for that. Have I covered everything off? I think so. Everything is not grad cracker in it. So. <laughs> Just get on grad cracker. That's all you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Amy. People. Thank you. Thank you, thank everybody. Thank you, everyone.